Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. By popular request, we're going to have a look at the team final for the World Championships that just took place in Doha. It's Japan versus France, and they met last year, so starting a bit of a tradition, these two countries. By the way, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, like the video, helps me out a lot, and if you're here often watching my videos, consider hitting that join button to support the channel. That would help me out a lot. So first up, we've got Hashimoto versus Gabba. And if you're not familiar with the format of the team event, basically what they do is there's a random selector that selects which weight category goes first, and that decides the order of things. Kind of important. Also, by the way, I haven't actually watched this final. I haven't watched any of it. I do know the results, but I'll keep those... I'll try to keep those. I'll try to keep those quiet. And, whoa! Did you see that? Look at that. That was an incredible Uchimata. Surprising Hashimoto. I mean, you can tell I haven't watched this. I mean, <laughs> within, within 20 seconds of the contest, Hashimoto, he's going to be... He's going to be shocked by that. We have to see that again. I lost my train of thought. Can't remember what I was saying. But always the judo, the team event, it's great stuff. Look at that. Ippon for France. One point up. So yes, it's a six-man contest. Three women, three men. And the weight categories are a little bit different to the individuals. They kind of spread it out a little bit, so you often get guys fighting people who are of a higher weight class or a lower weight class. It's pretty interesting. Although, Hashimoto, 73. This is a 73 kg weight category, so uh, he definitely knows Gaba. Gaba is in the same weight class as him. And so that is a huge... Ippon to start the event. Right, so next up, we've got Nizoi at under 70. So you can see on the screen now, just the differences in weight categories. I wish they would leave that on there a little bit longer. Just to have a, a longer look at it. So Nizoi against Pino. Pino, Pino, Pino. Sorry, my pronunciation of French names is not the best. So left is right. Pino, I mean, she's got a good grip on that sleeve already. Borderline illegal though, although the ref probably not picking that up at the moment. Now it's a standard grip. And Nizoi, she's got a big Uchimata. Haraigoshi as well. World Champion as well. And I heard from Takamasa Anai, hopefully you know who he is, that Nizo is actually from Tengri, and she is the first World Champion uh, as a lady to come from Tengri. There's lots of World Champions who are in the men's, but for the women's, Nizo is the first. Would you believe it? I'm not sure if she actually went to Tendi University, but she definitely has roots in Tendi. Maybe it was a junior high school, high school, or even maybe younger. I would have to look that up for you guys. But interesting, interesting fact, nonetheless. It's always the uh, most difficult thing there to control the sleeve. So left first right, I definitely think oh, Nizoi. Really nice Tomoinege attempt there. And Pino looking for the Juji, but not going to get it. Rolls over. Good defense. I definitely think Nizoi, being an Uchimata player, she, she likes this matchup. Left versus right generally favors an Uchimata player. It's a very good technique to do left versus right. And Pino, she's not going to do anything crazy like the Georgians. I think the French generally have a pretty traditional style of judo up the rate of at the very least. 
There's Saito Tatsuru. He went out. There's a great Ippon of him going out against Tushashvili from Georgia. Gets thrown with a huge Kochigari. So Pinochis, or was, playing with double sleeves for a little bit. There's that Uchimata. Big Uchimata attempt there. Pino defending well. And Pino, the grips, grips look good. She's got, she's got the under grip on the right side. She's pretty quick to get the sleeve. It's just whether she can use it. Nizoi, on the other hand, she can use it. Seen many a time her destroy people out of nowhere with a huge Uchimata. Yeah, those, those attempts, that's not going to work. Jumping in for a Seo Inage like that, need to set it up a little bit more. Bit aggressive there. Nizoi taking the undergroup now, which is different. And that was a weak, weak Tomoinage attempt. Nizoi jumped on that. Not looking for the Newaza too much though, Nizoi. That's definitely not her game plan. Shido for Pino. Sorry, I missed the first Shido for Nizoi. Nizoi now taking a big top grip. Sleeve grip deep on ooh, deep on the tricep. That also Togari almost came. To be honest, I cannot remember the last time Nizue won with a submission. Or even I mean she gets Wazadis and then goes into the Newaza quite often. Just for a hold down, but straight Newaza, I definitely haven't seen something from her like that. She's definitely a Person likes to throw. That was a good entry. The timing was good. Defending the Seoinage well. I'm not too familiar with Pino, but I think she needs a bit more than that Seoinage. It's a bit weak. Not really creating the the momentum. Needs to get Nizoe moving before she can go in for a technique like that. Golden score now. And if you don't know, golden score means the next point wins. Which is generally the case in judo, I think. These days a lot of people get a wazari up and then they just defend. Oh. Haraigoshi attempt there. In a minute, the Pino. Telling the coach to calm down a bit. Okay. I'm not sure what that achieves, but whatever. Oh, she got him now. And oh! Straight into the Juji. And she tapped. Wow. So Nizoe, the Uchimata wasn't working. So she goes in for the Ochigari. Wow. Now, obviously, the Ippon for the armbar, but I would really love to know if they would give a score for that Ochigari counter. Because we've all seen the final, uh, the men's plus 100 final, we all saw that. Teddy Rainier versus Tasoev, Russia versus France, and Tasoev got a beautiful counter to Teddy's Haraigoshi. And they gave it no score. So, I mean, this was this was a similar counter, a similar turnover. Here it is. And I would say they probably would give it a score. The leg is on the outside, so they can just somehow claim that that is a Kochigari, even though it looks nothing like a Kochigari. <laughs> but they would. I guarantee you they would. And the armbar. I mean, I was talking about Han Izoi. She doesn't really go 
for submissions that much. And that probably just shows that she's not too confident, not too competent on the ground. But Pino, I mean, her Seoinage Seo looked pretty average. But her groundwork, that was, that was slick. All right. Tajima now at under 90s versus Ngayop. Is that Ian Silent? Ngayop? Gayop? I don't know how to say his name. Sorry. I also do not know how to say this referee's name. But yes, Tajima, he is amazing. I gotta talk about Tajima for a little bit. He's competed at like four, four Grand Slams in the last, oh sorry, no, three, four major events anyway in the last two months. He's been all over the world, in Japan, he's been winning things, he's come close, really, really, really close a couple of times, ended up fighting Bika Uri. Tajima, he's just been on fire recently. Great judoka. Ngayap, he is tall and lanky. Looking for the Sumigaishi. Tajima defending well. But I don't think... I think Tajima's going to like this matchup. He's got a big Sode. I think he might have a Seoinage. Haven't seen it. But he's got a big Sode. And tall, lanky guys. I mean... That just That's easy work. Easy work for Tajima. We'll have a look at the gripping situation though. Because for a Sode, you need a Sode, which is a sleeve. Ooh, there's a Seoinage. No grips. What you got to attempt? Ngai up keeping a, a heavy pace on Tajima. He's got the sleeve looking for the top grip. Tajima's strong though. Oh, there it is. Look at that. He is so strong in the legs. If you look at Tajima's legs. They're not small, I'll tell you that. Definitely a big squatter. Ingay up taking care of that sleeve. Although, I don't like that tactic at all. Oh, Ochigari. That technique, sorry, that tactic I was talking about. Pushing the sleeve down and then going for the top grip. I mean, sometimes it works, some people make it work. Travis Stevens, he did it really well, but he was using the lapel, not just sleeve to top grip. You need, you need something else working for you to make that happen. Tajima, double hands on the, the left side now. Oh, here he goes again. Went for the Sode, looked for the Kochi. Guy up almost, almost took advantage of that arm. You can see Guy up. I think he's tiring a little bit. Tajima though, he's definitely been more defensive. Kept a slower pace so far. Their first right. Looking for the Sumigaishi again. So pretty incredible. Two fights in. France, two to zero. It's quite amazing though. I wouldn't say... Oh. I wouldn't say the French are a strong judo nation. They have a very strong women's team. But the fact that they make it to the finals pretty consistently in the team event, I think it just speaks to the, the different nature of the team event. You got a mixture, female and male. People got to work together, different weight classes. Oh, that was a big Ogoshi attempt. Big, big, big Ogoshi attempt. So Tajima, I mean, maybe the Sode isn't working for him. He's trying other things. I've seen an Ogoshi. 
I saw a Sayori Nugget earlier on. Tajima though, he likes that armpit grip. Now he changes to the sleeve. With that in guy up, he's just beating him to the punch. Beating him to the punch. So this is the third contest, total of six. Although I think, from memory, four points. First team to get four points wins. And then if it ends up being a draw, what happens is they go to the randomizer again, they do a random weight, and then those uh, athletes in that weight c category have to come out again. So it's quite exciting. I definitely think this, this team format is really, really exciting. Never used to watch the teams, but I do now. And Tajima, he must feel a lot of pressure right now. I mean, he's up on Shido's, but you really wanna, you really wanna get through this. Okay. Just getting rid of the the gi around the around the head. It is a passive movement. Tajima didn't like that kind of control. Straight back there. Nice. Big. Oh, that's got to be a wazari. So the sode wasn't working for him. Went to something different. That was a nice. He points here when I get attempt. No score. Kind of surprised. There's a Sode again. Ungai up, good defense. Oh, Chigari. Oh, he's got. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, Tajima holding onto the trousers and Ungai up going for the, the Sankaku hold down. Tajima, that was great defense. People should learn that. That was incredible defense. Turn towards his butt and then. Just the width of his back opened up Ngai up's legs. That was great. Yeah, so he gets the Shido for grabbing the leg, grabbing the pants, cross grip, sleeve feed. Come on, Tajima, you gotta. You gotta do this. Oh, also Togari, he's got the belt. Oh no. So Ngai up, he. He's definitely in the lead at the moment. Tajima, he's slowed down. Ngai up still somehow managing to keep a pace. This is crazy. I mean, if Japan goes 3-0, they have to win. Oh! oh, look at that. Huge Yagura Nage or front Uchimata as they call it. <laughs> Tajima, he's at he's at Park 24, and Takato, he's at Park 24 too. Takato, this is I think they used to call it the Takato Special, but he definitely didn't invent it. Just in Japan back in the day, not many people outside of Takato did that move. So Tajima, well, Tajima. Bit of variety there. His main techniques weren't working. The Sode, the Ipon Seoinage, had to go for a bit of variety. That was a great fight. That was great. So 2 1 now for France. Look at that. And that hand. I mean, he's lucky. He's lucky that's on the belt. Because you would hate to get two Shidos. Another Shido. Your third and final Shido for grabbing under that belt. Ho ho. Well done. 
You can tell what team I'm going for. Sorry for my Japanese bias, I do live in Japan. These are my buddies, Saito, I know Saito. I don't think uh, he would say he knows me, but he used to come to my dojo a long time ago, when he was a junior high school student here in Osaka. Back then he was 130 kgs and I could not throw him, and he could throw me pretty easily, so it's just amazing where he's gone. Segawa from Japan. I'm not too familiar with her. But she's definitely not the, the number one for Japan in this weight category. Plus 70, a weird weight category. It's a, a team's weight category. But I do wonder if there are any upper limits to the weight for the pluses. No, that doesn't sound right. I mean, Saito's in there. But plus 70, you would hate to have, you know, someone who's just above 70 fighting someone who is well into the hundreds. If someone could correct me on this name, Hamey, is that how you say it? Hamey? I hope that's correct. Hashimoto Dia. Now taking the responsibilities as captain I think now that Ono Shohei is out of the equation pretty interesting I kind of wonder what the dynamic is between those two are they friendly to each other do they talk some guys they have a great rivalry you know like Alta and Haga those guys same company Ooh, almost a wasari here but no others on the other hand I think Abe and Maruyama I've seen them training together. Obviously, they have kind of trainings that they do, obviously, in the dojo. But I've seen them, you know, running hills, running stairs together. Just a small group of them, five or six. So, it is interesting. I think Mariyama, though. I think Mariyama, deep down inside, he feels a lot of pain when he sees Abe. Abe, on the other hand, I think Abe... I don't, I don't think he cares, I don't think he thinks about it. At least that's what I've heard. I've heard Abe is very... What's the word? Not much of a deep thinker. That sounds kind of negative, but... Carefree. There we go. He's a carefree spirit. Maruyama though, he's crossing his T's, dotting his I's. He is thinking about everything, all the time, and I bet not getting the result he wants really, really just does his head in. This contest here, about halfway through now. Honestly, I do not think Hamey is going to score. Some of these big French girls, I'm sorry to say this, but I think they really do lack the ability to throw people. I mean, Segawa, she's not much of a thrower herself, but she's got more abilities than some of these heavyweight French judoka. I'm sure one of them is going to prove me wrong at some point, but... I mean, I see a lot of them winning with strength, with shidos, not really the most exciting judo. But I don't know why, these big French girls, why don't they have a big uchimata? Big, flexible uchimata? I, I feel like they should be able to do that. No, they're generally taller, generally have longer legs than the competition. I mean, look at this fight. And Uchimata would be perfect, a perfect weapon to have right now. Kosoto from Segawa. Oh, another Kosoto attempt. Oh, come on. Heimi defending well, even though she's got a jacket over her head. That can be really disorientating. 
I think uh, that's good to see she's opened it up. I think she'll do the same again now. Yeah, she definitely needs to put on the pressure here. Thanks, Neil Adams. If you're wondering, I am just barely listening to the commentary. Just having a little bit of sound as I go through this with you guys. Oh, almost gets counted. Looking for the Haraigoshi. Wasn't really an attack, so... I mean, Hami, I guess... I don't think we're going to see Shido's at the moment. Something special from Coralie Hamer here. Sorry, I was talking about Mariyama and Abe so much that I I missed the Shido's. This is why I'm not a professional commentator. I would just ramble on tangents. Really sorry. So next score wins. Segawa comes on. Segawa pulling that elbow on the inside. Wasn't that is really hard to deal with. Oh. That was a great attempt. Segawa going off the opposite side, but I mean, that's an attack from Hamey. She puts in two, three more of these. Another Shido will definitely come Segawa's way. And Segawa, she's not the number one Japanese judoka in this weight class. So she's out here to kind of stake her claim at at, at, at least number two. Nice Uranage attempt. So that's 1-1, one, one, an attack going both ways. Heima, is that how you say the name? Not Heimi. If you tell me M-E is pronounced Ma, I'm gonna... My mind is going to explode. It's gotta be Hamey. Some French person, please tell me how to say these names. Especially Ngayap. I'm pretty sure it's Ngayap. Oh, you got a attempt here. Oh, Seu Hitoshi. Oh, oh, almost got a counter. So those were good attacks. So I think Hami definitely up on attacks, although Segawa won't get a Shido here. I definitely feel the referees have done a good job recently of giving the Judoka kind of a final, maybe even like two final last chances. You know, you've got two final attempts. You probably, d we probably could give you a Shido at this moment, but we're going to give you two more attempts, and I do like that a lot. Nobody wants to see a match ended early, so it's good to kind of let it go on, and when you get a Shido and you're like, yeah, that, they definitely deserve that Shido, you kind of go, okay, sure. <laughs> so Segawa, I'm pretty sure she's got one more one more kind of get out of jail free card before that final Shido comes. Depends what she does here. She's got a grip. She needs to she needs to attack. Really needs to attack. Kosoto. So that looks good for Hami. And at this point, a Shido could definitely come. Or they'll give her, they'll just let it go, and it'll be the final, final. If she's first to attack here, she's going to take it. Yep. You're really clever, and you know the way that it's been going. You've got to this is definitely, to definitely the last chance. She hits hard now, and she That's does. Sigo, well, let's go. No. That's not good. Go. Oh, it is. Oh, she could have, she could have thrown an all sort of there. She could have gone for a sumigaishi. Oh, my. This, this really puts the pressure on This is it, right? Now. 
Let's see the gesture. Here we go. So 3-1 to France. Hamey takes it. Not with a technique, but by Sheetals. It is what it is. She had a few good attacks in there. A nice Seoui Nage. Wasn't bad. But come on, plus 70 and you're doing Seoui Nage's. We want to see Uchimata. That's that's the technique, right? When you're a big heavyweight. Uchimata and then that, all that close range stuff. Kosoto's. Kosoto Gake. Ochigari. If you're a bit dynamic in the legs. Lost so many times, has he? Uh, he I mean, this all she got, he was good. So, Saito Tatsuru now, and he hasn't had the best tournament. Also, guys, let me know in the comments. I could totally cut this up and show you guys only the individual matches, you know, cut out all the downtime. But for some reason, the team events, I just like to have it run. It's kind of uh, builds a little bit of tension, so let me know what you think. For the next one, I could just cut it up. Also, I'm not sure if you guys want to see some other matches, like the Georgians, for example. Let me know if there's any other team matches that you guys want to see. So Saito versus... Terek, 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 and this is plus 90, although Terek, he looks, he looks like an under 100 KG fighter, and Saito, he's had problems in the past against people who are faster than him, I think he deals with people who are huge, much better than he does with you know, people who are fast with the kumite. Although this is this is Tatsuru's, this is this is his area. That really close range double lapel, sucking you in. I've felt this before, and he sucks you in with that left hand. That is a vacuum. So I think Saito he really needs to win this one. One three. I mean, Japan is under the pump here. Although Saito, I mean, you got to like him in this matchup, right? Here we go, going in for the Uchimata. Doesn't get it. That's okay though. Suzuki, Keiji Suzuki, given the instructions. I think he's saying be more front on, don't turn your body to him too much. I think because of the size difference, he just wants them to pull him in. See how close he is? Basically pushing his chest into his head. And now, I mean, this is the pressure. Pretty sure the Shido has to go to... It's definitely going to Tarek. go, I think, to Tarek, yep. because Tarek was just... Uh, I mean, Saito was just waiting for him. Backside out and yeah. uh, doing nothing. You can't do that. And Saito, I mean, two minutes left to go. Two Shido's up. Oh! Ochigari. I was about to say he might win this by Shido, but... He's got good Nawaza. It's a Kokushikan thing. They're pretty proud of the Nawaza. I think Saito would, wasn't gonna go far there, was he? would like to continue that tradition. <laughs> he does have quite a few wins with Nemoza. Although, I do think he needs to vary up his, uh, his techniques a little bit. He's got one technique that he likes to do from the turtle position. Kind of uses his head and his leg on their side. Oh! Wow. You could have come at it a different way, Joseph. Third Shido, so... Yeah, I just, uh, probably not, not the most exciting match, but... Still, Japan. 
under the pump a little bit less now but still under the pump two three Ibinuma Akimoto in the stands it's interesting I wonder I wonder how the Japan team goes through the process of selecting people for the coaching staff I mean there are people who have been world champions who aren't obviously in the coaching staff I guess I guess they just kind of put their hands up and say yeah I want to do it that's unfortunate Saito, will he take gold at Paris? I don't know. Sometimes he, he really looks on form, goes through everyone, and other times I think, he, I think he's still learning the game a little bit, how to, how to really turn a match in his favor. Funokubo versus... Sisqueak? Sisqueak? Sis I'm sorry guys, you gotta help me out. Sizik, there we go. Pretty sure Neil Adams knows what he's saying. Sizik. Oh Ushimata for Sizik. And didn't this happen last year? I think Sizik was in the, the team last year. She's really good. She's pretty good. Fast. Usually the, the French women's team, I mean, Bouchard's really good, she's at the lighter weights, but generally it's the heavier weights where they really dominate. But Funokubo, down. Down on Wazari. So if Sazik, if she wins this, that'll make it 4-2, and then the best Japan can do is go for a draw. And at that point, they'll use the randomizer and randomly pull out two guys, two girls, to face each other. And that would be quite, quite climactic. How many times they've met before, these two? That's exactly what I'm looking at. Funukubo, I'm not too sure what she's doing. She's... She's a bit slow. Behind the gun. I mean, she's got that right hand on the tricep. She doesn't like it, though. That's not the ideal grip that she wants. Oh, it's a little better now. I'm not sure what her preference is. Some people prefer underneath. Other people prefer on top. Generally, it's underneath. It is... Here we go, she might like this, or maybe she won't. She's getting posture broken here. Sazik, this is her chance. Oh, 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 almost got it again. So Funakubo, she is getting dominated. Sazik. This is good. So it's as Loretta Doyle said. Or oh, this is bad. Oh no. What a comeback. So I was just saying how great it is for Sazik to burn the clock down in the Nemoza, but you know, from God. It's unfortunate. So Funakubo, she gets she comes back. Guess the Nemoza win. Look at them in the crowd. They love this. Where do these people come from? Doha? How many Japanese people are living in Doha who want to go and see judo? So, three each. Japan coming on strong now. Started off very slow. Oh, here we go. Sorry. 
I did make a mistake with the scores. I thought there was a few more rounds to go. Man, this goes fast. So that was six contests. And three, three apiece. I like how they do this, line them all up. And then one person from each team is just gonna remain as they decide which weight class it's gonna be. Golden score decision contest that starts immediately in golden score? Is that new? There we go, it's spinning it now. They mustn't start in Golden Score. Who's it gonna be? Oh, I thought it was gonna stop on plus 90. It's gonna be Margot. Under 70, so knees oy. And this is Pont, right? So not Pont, sorry, Pino. Pino. Uh, it can be reversed this time. So, Pino, last time. Look at Saito, I wonder what he's saying to us. Last time, Pino, I mean, went to the ground and got her in an armbar, although it was a counter. So, Nizoi, she made the mistake. I don't think she'll be going for that Uchimata Ochi kind of combination again. And she'll probably avoid the ground. So on the feet, I still think it's Nizoi. But we'll see what happens. I like this because there's no there's no time to strategize. No time out the back. Kind of go over footage. See what people's tendencies are. I mean, they have already fought before, but... Oh! Nice, Kochi. By Pino. Pino opening up the account. And Nizoi, she's got to be feeling this. I tell you what, the place will Look at that. Once it happens, well done, not grabbing the leg. I like that sidestep from Pino. That's a nice sidestep. Is it going to be Pino? See we get that was better, better than the first attempts. He's always looking to pick her up. And she fancies a bit of Nawaza too. Strangle. Going for the clock choke. She's gonna cut the hips across. Cut the hips. But her hand, her hand's not that strong on the lapel. She's barely got two fingers on it. Mate. So some good aggressive judo in the beginning. See that guy with the binoculars? Well, those are special glasses to see if the fighters are okay, believe it or not. Saito, Tajima there. Anyway. Okay. Good mates, those two, apparently. Still game on, Pino now coming forwards. Top grip. Oh, oh. That was good. That was a good attack. Definitely not a Wazari though. <laughs> I love how they sit down when they see they're on camera. Man, this is tense. Means a lot here for the Japanese to get this back. They lost the Olympic final to France. Kosoto here. Now she's got a top grip. I think Nizoi will like the top grip. Being a little bit taller and an Uchimata fighter. Now she's got the sleeve. That Tomoinagi is trash. Sorry. <laughs> I've seen some bad entries into Tomoinagi, but that's the worst. Can she close it down here, Nizoi? Pressure in the Newaza here. I'm kind of surprised Nizoi, she's really trying to close she's just going down there and her arm is in, in an awkward position but lost by Newaza and she, she doesn't care. She fancies herself down there. You know what, Teddy Renier should be here. He should be <laughs> the plus 78. For France, so we could see Saito Teddy Renier too. That'd be amazing. I guess he's too old. 
I mean, it's such a big ask, right? Like, you just finished, you know, grueling day becoming world champion. And the next day you have to enter in the team's event. I think that is for the young guns. She's had to leave the uh, tatami because she got a bit of blood. Oh no, blood. Hands, or I think yeah. it's on the hands. Ready to go, Pino. <laughs> Here we go, that was quick. Sometimes that can take forever. 3-3. Three, three. This is the uh, deciding score. This is the golden score. There it is again, the Kochi, but you could call that a drop. It's good though, golden score. We've got no Shido's on the board. Another Kochi. She's going to have to be a bit careful. These, these Kochi's, they can add up if they start to not do anything. The Shiro's are going to begin. All right, Nizoi. Whoa, that was close. Was that even a technique? So if you push someone over, it's not considered an aggressive attack because it's not considered a judo technique. Is that correct? There from it's been a bit Pino. weird recently with the whole Tasoev, Teddy Rania. What is a judo technique? What isn't? I just thought in my naivety that all the judo techniques covered all the possible Zoe. ways you could get someone down to the floor. I just thought no matter what the variation, there would be a name for it. But it appears that is not the case, and if you can't put a technique name to it, then it's not a waza, and you can't give it a score. A bit ridiculous, really. Come on. That Tomoinage was better. Still though, she needs to move first. She needs to shuffle her feet. She's got a nice sidestep. What? She went into the Tomoinage. She applied an armbar. Nizoi was still standing. Again underneath. But it didn't look like the arm was, you know, in any danger, in any pain. Didn't like, didn't like, she wasn't, I don't know, but if you're in that position, that's unfortunate. That is an unfortunate Shido for Pino. Actually, see that riff? That referee there is the the guy who <laughs> judged the Tasuwe of Teddy Rania final. And he was quick. He was quick to make decisions. He doesn't like going to the video ref. He makes his decisions and then he moves on. Nizoi with the undergrip now. Although Pino's got the sleeve. Not a bad attempt. One Pretty good, I thought. And needs two hands on. Just about get away Is that, that. Abaganu breastfeeding in the back? <laughs> Grab the leg. She grabbed the leg. Hey, no time for celebration, please. She she grabbed the leg. That was worse than Mariyama versus, uh, what's his name? The Mongolian. Um, I forgot his name. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Actually, I was saying earlier, you know, she did well not to grab the leg, but this time 
like she's got a habit of putting her elbow and arm out and that time she definitely grabbed it okay that's a good attack here it is here's the replay goes in well she's touching it but I mean I thought I thought it was grabbing the leg well, I thought you could use elbows against the leg but apparently it's just touching the leg and I see people touching the legs all the time especially for Kataguruma Kataguruma they always do it wow talk about drama the hand went down and uh, it was hand assisted to finish it off Pino now she's underneath I thought that was a decent attempt She's definitely throwing in more attacks than Nizoi. It's just unfortunate. Definitely. It's just unfortunate she's got two Shiro's to her name. Yondon Perenlai. There's his name. Mariyama vs. Yondon Perenlai. Mariyama got a Shiro for the same thing. Good attack. So Nizoi deserves a Shiro here. She definitely deserves a Shiro. Nope, no Shiro for Nizoe. I mean, there was a... Ochigari attempt a second ago. Okay, she's going for it again. Look, went for the Tomoenage, threw the leg over the head, went for the arm. That was worse than before. She's going to get a Shiro here. No? Okay. Oh, it's coming. They're going to do a Mate. They went to the video ref. So the first ref said no. I mean, the ref in the center said no. The video ref people probably said that's not okay. And, I mean, what is wrong with that? What is wrong? You can't do flying jujis. <laughs> but even now, you can't do a tomoinage into an armbar. That's ridiculous. Okay, he... Alright, whatever. She's crying. I gotta say, that was the most anticlimactic golden score match ever. Oh my god. Okay, so... My final thoughts on this. Great team event. Up until that match, I thought it was pretty good. Japan had to come back for sure. But Nizoi, I think she lost that one. And how much better would it be if France won and Pino actually won with that Kochi Makikomi and she didn't grab the leg? That would be a much more exciting story. And I think it would be, it would be better for the sport too if we saw more of that and less of what we just saw. Unbelievable. Alright guys, thank you very much. It's been good doing this with you. Let me know what you think in the comments. I don't usually do these kind of long forms, long form uh, videos, but please let me know. Alright, I'll see you later. Peace.